Ukraine is uh, Michael Bosaku, senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and the former spokesman for the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Uh, Michael, we were hoping to get your line up uh, so that we could see you, but we've, we've had to establish uh, a phone connection. Um, I'm assuming this is because you've also had to experience uh, emergency power cuts in Odessa. We've just heard our correspondent Ben Wiedemann describing that some parts of the country are experiencing between 30 to 40 percent uh, power outages. Um, could you explain your current situation and what you're seeing in the city you're in right now? Sure, uh, Eleni, good to be with you again. Well, I am sitting in the dark. Um, and as you said, we couldn't establish uh, a visual connection because internet data is down. So is power, so is water, so is the heating. So um, the area I am in, which is uh, near central Odessa, has been relatively untouched for the past few weeks. But I think today is about as bad as it gets where all of the utilities are not functioning. Um, as Ben indicated, we're still seeing, I mean, going around today, this kind of irrepressible defiance or resilience uh, among Odessa residents. This is one of the most entrepreneurial places on the planet, and you're seeing small, medium-sized business owners uh, trying to cope as best they can, but it's very, very difficult because generators are expensive, diesel, and also a lot of people just aren't going out anymore because of a lot, lack of electricity or enthusiasm. And we really thought we were going to head into the New Year Eve period uh, with this calm, but uh, that five-hour attack today caused quite a bit of uh, disruption, got to say. Mm. Look, Michael, we, we've spoken many times since the start of this war. Um, it is shocking to see the Russians targeting critical infrastructure, but it is not surprising because they know that that is where the country is vulnerable. If you're hitting power during a cold period, you're, you're hoping for a specific outcome here. This while there were hopes of some kind of negotiations to a peaceful or diplomatic outcome. Um, how are you viewing the potential of, of this ending in some way? Um, because the messaging from the Kremlin is they're going in full force and as aggressive as possible. Sure. Well, I think uh, what Mr. Putin had hoped is to break the kind of backbone of the country of people's confidence has not worked. In fact, the opposite happened is that people, uh, even here in Odessa, are becoming extremely patriotic and uh, supportive of the president. And, of course, everybody hopes for peace, but not on uh, an external party's terms. And what I mean by that is that um, most Ukrainians' definition of victory, as I've written for CNN Opinion, for example, is uh, including getting back Crimea and the occupied Donbass. That is something the Russians do not seem to want to listen to. So I think we're quite a distance away in terms of uh, getting a durable peace. I mean, when I worked for the OSC in 2014 for those two years, we, we helped broker many peace agreements and none of them held, usually because the Russian side violated it. So Ukrainians are remaining hopeful, they're remaining uh, united, uh, resilient, but the Russians are attacking the only way they know how, with these long-range missiles and drones, and hoping to uh, really disrupt the economy. But I, I don't think uh, that's going to get them uh, their, their definition of victory in any way. Look, the, the Kremlin um, said no to the Ukrainian 10-point peace plan. Are you worried about a stalemate scenario and protracted war? You know, well, Actually, Ukraine has been uh, dealing with a frozen conflict since 2014, eight years ago when the war first started. So I think there is um, a bit of, uh, you know, it, it almost seems a, a fact of life here is that that's what the relationship is going to be like with Russia. In fact, some analysts are predicting that this war could go on in, what, in you know, kind of a frozen conflict format for quite some time to come, even years. But um, the most important thing right now, I think, for Ukraine is for Western leaders, especially uh, President Biden, to follow through on their pledges to help Ukraine defend itself, to close its skies completely so that this strategy of Russia to break the economy won't work. But it's going to take a lot of uh, technology. It's going to take time. For example, those Patriot battery systems won't be uh, in place for a few weeks from now. So um, I think the Russians will They'll try more attacks, but um, it doesn't seem to be working anyway in their favor.
Yeah. Michael, always good to speak to you. Um, I hope you find a way to stay warm and stay connected with these power outages, and we always wish you the best. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Uh